I'm going to be going through um, first fruits and what they mean in the Bible and tying it all into the night. I guess I could use some light, huh? Tying it all into the Lord's Supper, which is a Passover, as we've already looked at. But first of all, I'm going to look at first fruits from the Bible. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. I'm going to start in Deuteronomy 8.8. 8. There are seven first fruits. There are, we'll go there real quick. These are the first fruits, Deuteronomy 8.8. 8. A land of wheat and of barley and of vines, which is grapes, and of fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, or olive oil, and honey. Now the honey are dates. It's not bees honey. Um, Second Chronicles 31 tells us that a first fruits of all seven species were due to, due to uh, Jehovah. We go 31, five. And as soon as the command came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance of first fruits of corn. Corn is grain, so that's the barley and, and the wheat, wine and oil and honey, and all the increase of the field, and the tithes of all things brought they in abundance. Nehemiah tells us again that the first fruits were more than just barley and wheat. Nehemiah 10, 35. And to bring the fruits of our ground, which would be anything like the wheat and the barley and the vines, and the fruits of and the first fruits of all the fruits of the trees. And the trees would have been the figs, the pomegranates, the olives, and the dates. Uh, so we bring all the fruits of the trees year by year into the house of the Lord. The other thing I want to show you is the big debate that's going on in the, in the calendar right now is when do we offer the first fruits? Um, Exodus 23, 13. And in all things that I have command, I've said to you, uh, unto you be circumspect and make no 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 that's not it 2019 sorry and the first of the first fruits of thy land that's all of them all seven the first of the first fruits the word for first is reshit the reshit means the first the beginning the best the chief okay so genesis in hebrew is called the reshit so in the beginning so the, the beginning of our bikur, our first fruits of the land, we shall offer into the house of the Lord thy God. Okay. Leviticus 23, 20. Okay. I don't want to do that one right now. Hang on. Exodus twenty two twenty nine. You shall not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt give unto me. So we had to offer them and we couldn't delay them. So from my understanding, we did right this year and we're not delaying the first fruits of the barley. Um, Exodus, I'm sorry, Ezekiel. Forty-four, thirty. And the first of all the first fruits of all the things of every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblation shall be the priests. Ye shall give it unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. So we had to give the first of everything, and we couldn't delay it. It wasn't just the barley and the wheat. It's throughout the year. It's all the seven species. 
you go to 48, 14, and it basically says the same thing. It says that the second half of that verse says, the first fruits of the land belong to God because they're holy unto the Lord. So those were separated out. That's what holy means, just being separated out unto the Lord. Um, that's really important because I want to go now to Leviticus 2.14. It says, if you offer a meat offering, which is grains, of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy dry fruit, green ears of corn dried by fire, or even corn beaten out of full ears. Thou shalt put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereon, and it shall be a meat offering. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of, part of the beaten oil, a part of the beaten corn thereof and part of the oil thereof with all the frankincense thereof it is offered by fire unto the lord okay this was a first fruits offering this is not necessarily just about the barley this was also this applied to the wheat too it was a first fruits offering of corn of grain so this would have applied to not only the wheat it would have applied to the barley With that in mind, let's go to the Lord's Supper. Matthew 26. Let's go to Luke. Luke. I like Luke. I like Luke because he told the story in order. Luke 22. We're at the we're at the the the, the what's called the Lord's Supper, which is a Passover. It says about um, the institution of the Lord's Supper. And when the hour is come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with them. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He called it a Passover. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more eat thereof until, the king, and, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I, I, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So the fruit of the vine, we're talking about the grapes. Why was it as a first fruits offering legal for them to be drinking wine at the table? Well, when you know the calendar according to the seven species, the grapes are not ready until the fifth month. So what were they drinking of? They were drinking of the previous year's grapes. So it was totally legal to drink the previous year's harvests because the previous year's first fruits had already been offered. And he took the bread. Let's look at this word bread. This word bread is artos. It does not mean barley bread. It means wheat bread. And I'm going to use that word. And he took artos and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. So he had leavened wheat bread on the table. Why was it legal for Yeshua to have leavened wheat bread on the table? Because at Passover, we have seven weeks before the wheat is going to be mature enough to harvest and offer a first fruits offering. That means that the bread that was on the table on the night of Passover was from the previous year and the first, first fruits had already been offered on that. So it was totally legal to have the bread on the table. And we'll go on. Uh, Luke twenty two twenty. Likewise, after this, after, uh, likewise the cup after supper, saying, "This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you." Okay, so it was this night that the Messiah made them partake of what he had already be, been saying to them. Let's go to John six thirty two. We're going to look at a lot of John right now. John 6, 32. 
And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that artos from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true artos from heaven. For the artos of God is him which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Jump down to 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the artos of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Verse 48. I am that artos of life. Verse 50. This is the artos which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Verse 51, I am the living artos come down from heaven. If any man eat of this artos, he shall live forever. And the artos that I give is my flesh, which I will give uh, for the life of the world. So he's telling them ahead of the supper already, but they still were just not making that connection. This is that artos which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth, he that eateth of this artos shall live forever. So it was at the Passover meal that the Messiah had leavened bread and wine, which was totally legal. Grapes were not, not harvestable yet. Bread, uh, wheat was not harvestable yet. So it was totally legal. It was last year's harvest. And the Messiah is telling them that he was the bread of life. Let's jump back to Leviticus 23, 20. This is the, um, the offering of, of Shavuot. And the priests shall wave them with the bread of first fruits. What is the bread of first fruits? The bread of first fruits, let's back up, Leviticus 23, 16, uh, let me, 23, 17. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tin steels. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are first fruits unto the Lord. So we have two leavened wheat loaves that are, uh, that are first fruits to the Lord. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits, which is the leavened wheat bread, for an offering before the Lord with two lambs, and they shall be holy to the uh, Lord for the priest. Okay. This represents, in my opinion, and after a lot of study about the twos that we're given to understand, this represents the Father and the Son, Yeshua and his Father. Um, the Bible tells us that Yeshua was born in Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem is literally two words. It's called Bethlehem which means house of bread. That's where Yeshua came from. And John is full of, of terms of Yeshua coming from his father, returning to his father. I and my father are one. I can only do and say the things I've heard of my father. So if Yeshua is the bread of life and he's only doing and saying the things he's heard of his father, then his father is the bread of life. So what does this mean to us for the Passover? We have this tradition of making sure we get all of the yeast out of our house. And it is a tradition. I want to show you something in the Old Testament. Give me a second. I'm going to pull up my whiteboard here. And let me get my pencil. Where'd it go? Okay. 
This is the word for barley. Okay. And it is pronounced say or say or. This is the word for leaven. And it is pronounced, say, or. The only difference in these two words is this word, say, or, barley has an ein. This word, say, or, leaven has a olive. This is no coincidence. Remember that we spoke about that um, the leaven of barley came from a sourdough process. Um, let me take a second. Let me find a verse. Hosea 7, 8. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the, the, nation, the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Okay. Remember we talked about humans are now born as barley because they're not eternal. That these, these barley seeds, these bodies are going to fall to the earth and die one day. So as a barley cake... Ephraim was not turned, he was leavened because he had been exposed to the elements and he had soured. So say or barley Play. terrible writing, sorry. Say or barley and say or leaven is telling us that the only thing that we have to throw out for Passover, since we're dealing with the sins that come from human flesh, is the barley sourdough starter. The leaven that exists in the wheat loaf is the ruach, okay? This is unleavened, and this is barley. Can I prove that the leaven in the wheat loaf is barley? I can. Let's go here. Luke 13, 21. Twenty-two. Twenty, sorry. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. And if we look at this word, it says specifically in the Strong's that it is, um, that it's flour meal. If you go into this thing, let's see that is wheat flour. When you, when you do the word study on this, that this is wheat flour, okay? That a woman took and hid in three measures of wheat flour till the whole was leavened. So we've traditionally been taught that all leaven is sin, 
because not very many people understand that leaven in the wheat loaf represents the Holy Spirit. And how many measures did this woman, woman hide uh, the, the, the leaven in? She hid it in three measures of wheat flour. And this will be important when we go back to the book. But for now, we just need to look and we need to see that not all leaven needs to be thrown out. We want the leaven in the wheat flour because that represents the ruach. The leaven in the barley represents the sins of Adam and the sins of our flesh. Give me a second and let's go to another verse that will make more sense to you. First uh, Corinthians 5, 6, it says, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that the, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now he's talking about the assembly. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Okay, there was an old leaven. What was the old leaven? The old leaven was the sexual immoralities that defiled the church. What was it that we're told in the first part of Corinthians? Let me jump back over there in, in, in Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. The visions in the church is where he starts. Okay, so he's talking about the old leaven. And he also in here is going to refer to, um, to a man. I'm sure this is it. Hang on, let me look. This is, I didn't pre-look at this. I'm going from memory. He talks about a man who is actually um, sleeping. Hang on. Sleeping with uh, his mother-in-law, if I remember right, this is the right chapter. Let me look. Yes, 5.1. It's reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Okay, we're back to the jealousy law, basically. Okay, you've got you've got a wife that's that's not that's that's committing adultery against her husband not only that she's doing it with her stepson this is just the story of what uh canaan did with noah's wife all over again and he's talking now we were just in first corinthians that we're to purge out that old leaven that old leaven of of i of of um of serving bad gods and and this this symbol of this jealousy law of breaking of breaking the laws of God purge out that old leaven that you may be a new lump okay this is a, the word lump and a lump literally is through the idea of a swelling we're told to be a new swelling so there's the leaven. It's not that we don't have anything that leavens us. It's that when we become as the word of God and we receive the word of God um, in our lives, then we become as wheat. I got one chat. Hang on. I wasn't looking at. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, let me finish this. So we become we become as wheat and we're supposed to be again leavened. Remember that the wheat loaves were offered on Shavuot. What happened on Shavuot? We were filled with the Ruach. The, the wind came in again. Okay, question. So is the way sheaf offered uh, when it's cut right away on the day of the offering? Is it determined from the early tender shoots of barley during inspection to estimate when it's ready a few? Okay, so there's a really good article in the group now that was actually not written by me, but it was written by Joseph Dumond, and I posted it in the group, which was which is very much unlike me. But he went through in detail the way that his grandfather harvested grains and the condition it was in. It was like what I brought home. 
Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, I'm in total agreement with that. Because we don't want to lose okay. one grain with of food. Dough makes not dinner. one grain of food. So that would have been like, you, he, you cut it that day that you offer it? No, I would have waited. I would have waited a little while longer. As long as it's drawing some kind of moisture the ground, you can delay it a bit. But once you cut it, okay. there's a genetic signal in that thing that it's going to make a starch in those grains. It's going to take all the energy, all the fluids, everything that's left in it, and it's going to begin to develop a grain. I will be going back on... Um, Oy, oy, oy. I'm going to be going back on, I can't see the date from here. Let me look. On the 12th of March, that's three days before wave sheep, to look at that barley again. Pray the goats don't eat it because the, the flocks were everywhere. Pray that God protects at least part of that patch. So I have I something to check. So I was right. It's going to, the wave is going to be on the 15th. That's the Sabbath following the Passover. Yes. Or the day after, I mean. Gotcha. Okay. I'm getting yes. it. Yeah. 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 So all of this is important. What I'm going through is just to say that we have the tradition of throwing out all the yeast in our house, but it's not necessary. The only thing we were supposed to throw out is if we had leaven barley, if we had the barley starter, we don't throw out the leaven wheat. That represents the Ruach. That represents the bread of life. Look at what they did. Let me show you this real quick. After the Last Supper, Matthew 9.30. Let's go to Matthew. Uh, Matthew is, wait a minute, that's not the right one. Hang on. Luke. Luke is one of my favorite passages after the resurrection. You go to Luke 24, and we're on the road to Emmaus. And I'm just, because I love it, I'm just going to read the whole thing. And behold, two of them that went the same day, the day that Yeshua rose, to a village called the Maus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with him. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. So their eyes were blinded. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are there that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, uh, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should, be, should redeem Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And yea, certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O foolish and slow of heart to believe, uh, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? And from the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the things concerning himself. And as they drew nigh into the village further they went, he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass... As he sat at meat with them, he took artos, and he blessed it and brake it and gave to them. 
and their eyes were opened and he knew that and, and they knew him and he vanished from sight and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened the scripture to us and they rose up the same hour and returned to jerusalem and found the eleven gathered and them that were with him saying the lord is risen indeed and hath appeared unto simon so they saw him. It wasn't until they broke the bread, when they got to Emmaus, they broke that artos and they saw him. This is why that we read so many times that they met at the end of Sabbath and they continued with the breaking of bread. Let's look at that. Look at some of those verses. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking bread. Acts 2.42 Acts 2.46, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking artos house to house, and they did eat meat, their food, with gladness and singleness of heart. Acts 27, and upon the first day of the week, when did Yeshua raise? The first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break artos, Peter preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Acts 20.11, when he therefore was come up again and had broken our toast and eaten and talked a long while, even until break of day, so he departed. Acts 27, 35, and when he had thus spoken, he took Artos and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat bread. So the tradition of the Messiah, of the disciples, was to break Artos on the first day of the week when the eyes of the two men on the road to Emmaus were opened. This is why we're told in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, but if a man examine himself, and so let but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of artos and drink of that cup, that wine. So the tradition that we see, this is why it says that whenever we do it, we do it remember do it in remembrance of him. It wasn't a commandment; it was that they had come together out of tradition on the first day of the week, which is Yom Rishon, shown at the close of Pesach, and they would take wheat bread and they would break it among themselves and share it. And actually, I've taken this tradition myself. At the end of the Sabbath, I take leavened wheat bread and I break it and I have a small glass of wine and I ask for Elohim to open my eyes so that I can more clearly see the Messiah. I want to think if there's anything else I want to cover. So I'll just go over the rest of the Passover. So we know that on the, the, that the Messiah would have gone ahead and ate the lamb, the bitter herbs, and the unleavened barley. And again, that would have been unleavened barley from the previous year because first fruits had not happened. Unleavened barley at midnight. That's when the Passover meal was eaten, was at midnight. After that, they would have gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane sorry, 
And that was the Midnight Watch. Let me see if I can um, pull that scripture up for you. Okay, I'll have to get, I don't have that handy, but there's a verse in the Old Testament that the, the people were always keeping the, the watch of the night of the Lord, that they, uh, even in, when they were in Jerusalem for the week of unleavened, that they were staying up all night and they were turning and going into their tents in the morning. So the Garden of Gethsemane was the watch night. The Messiah said to Peter and, and the other disciples, can't you watch with me one hour? And so the watch ended the morning when Peter was sitting around the fire trying to hear what was being said about Yeshua when he was in front of the Sanhedrin. It ended when the rooster crowed. The... Um, and then we went over how the Messiah was crucified at three o'clock, which is the wrong time. And yet how he was, uh, he gave his life as if a sun was setting between the evenings. So really, that's really what I wanted to, rec to bring to you today is just the fact that there's no reason to throw out your yeast. There's no reason to throw out your wheat, wheat bread. There's no reason to throw out your baking soda. There's no reason to throw out anything unless you have a leavened barley loaf in your refrigerator or unless you have a barley sourdough in your house. Other than that, you should keep, and there will be on my table, a leavened wheat loaf. And, a, and wine and olive oil because the sop that the Messiah dipped the oil, dipped the bread into and gave to Judas was a sop of olive oil. That was the traditional way. Um, I'm going to go ahead, Maria, and I'm going to close the video. It's, it wasn't really meant to be long and it really wasn't meant to be about the book, but it yes. was really, really meant to just go through Passover. And yes. To show you That's that we're perfect. free from the liberty of doing all the crazy things and all of that stuff like we've we've been bound to traditionally. Yes. I love it. It's beautiful. I'm going to re-listen to it. And thank you for taking time to do that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And this is recorded, so I will, I will get it posted up. Okay. Thank you. Have a blessed day, Becca. You too. Have a great day. Bye. Shalom.